Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today we are going to create a really fun gradient on a cake of Knit Picks Bear Stroll fingering weight yarn. This yarn is 70% fine superwash merino wool, 25% nylon, and 5% stellina. Normally when I do cake dyeing, I like to use a non-superwash wool. I like to slow down the rate of color absorption so that way maybe we'll get some food coloring in towards the center. Many, many years ago, before even Dye Pot Weekly, I tried cake dyeing on some yarn, um, on some superwash yarn, and I was surprised that the colors didn't penetrate as far as I was expecting. They mostly bound to the outside. Since then, I've done this with inserting Easter egg tablets in the center and whatnot, but I don't think I've played around with this with acid dyes yet. So that's what we're going to do today. I'm not expecting any breaking from our experiment, but hopefully we will have a really nice gradient of a saturated color to a pastel. Maybe even there could be some white. We won't know until we give this a shot. I placed my yarn cake in my dedicated dye pot, and now I'm going to fill it up so that way it can be submerged completely in water. 16 cups of water was enough to fully submerge this blank. I did press it down some to remove some air from it so the whole thing could be completely saturated. If I wanted to slow down the absorption of dye towards the center, I could add the cake to the dye bath completely dry. But I do want some of the color to go towards the center. Um, there's a lot of resist here, so I'm doing everything I can to give us a good chance. Everything is still cold. I am not on my stove yet. But let's add some color to it. Today we are going to be playing with um, some Dharma acid dye in the color Cherry Bomb, which is a wonderful, wonderful red. I am going to add only half a cup to our pot. And actually, I think that that's basically exactly the amount of dye that I have. Since things are cool, I'm going to go ahead and rinse off my cup a bit. And now we're going to head over to the stove. I'm going to turn the heat on high just so that way we can start seeing some bubbles and then I'll reduce it so we're either at a low simmer or just below a simmer. Um, starting it cold is another way that we can get a little more even coverage on the outside and again give some time slow down the rate that the color will strike so that way maybe there's a chance we will see some color in the middle now i don't think any way i go about this there's a chance that uh, we'll have bright red all the way in the center but we'll see um, I know that if we started this in a hot bath that we would see so much color strike around the outside. Now with the one cup of dye, that's about a 1.2% DOS, meaning that there's about 1.2 grams of dye per 100 grams of yarn. However, we don't have the full skein in there. I mean we do, but because of the way it's wound into a cake, there's limited surface area. So we will see a range from a much more high intensity of saturation on the outside to less on the inside. I'm having a bit of an internal debate right now about whether or not I want to add some acid now or wait until we've brought the heat up. I think I'm going to wait because that was my plan, but it's worth noting that my tap water is slightly acidic and so I do see a lot of colors starting to strike with even no acid. After 10 minutes of warming up, I am going to add a quarter cup of white vinegar, which is equivalent to four tablespoons. A quarter cup is about 60 milliliters, one tablespoon is 15 milliliters. I am adding this much because this is a proportion that I frequently will start with. I'm going to give this a little bit of a push in the pot, but now I'm going to leave it on the high heat because we don't quite have a ton of bubbles yet, but I'm going to let this be for I think another 10 minutes, uh, but if I notice the heat gets a little too high I'll reduce it in the meantime. 10 minutes after adding the vinegar we are 
just below a boil. We got up to more of a boil and I reduced the temperature. But you can see, ooh, look at that sparkle. Ooh, is the Stellina absorbing some color? I can't tell. Uh, but we've got a deeper, deeper color on the outside. And you can see we've got more of a bright red in there, but that doesn't tell us what's happening on the interior. I'm gonna add another quarter cup of vinegar, pouring some directly onto that center. And I'll come back in 30 minutes. The 30 minutes are up and most of the dye has cleared. You can see how much paler it really is. Since it can be hard to rinse and wash the yarn cake, this is a nice opportunity for a yarn mop. Also, so then we can see just how much color really is left. Right here, I have a skein of dry Knit Pick Swish DK, and there's actually a reasonable amount of color left in here. Um, this skein is 100% Superwash Merino, and I am adding it dry. So that way we can help soak up some of that extra color. Now, if we compare these pinks to those reds we see, most of the color is in our original yarn cake. But there's still a reasonable amount of color in the pot. I'm gonna go ahead and add another half cup, pouring some directly on the cake. Oops. Half cup of white vinegar to help things absorb. And I'm gonna let this sit for 20 minutes. During those 30 minutes, I moved our mop a few times. And that is because I think that we might be seeing some color bleeding coming from the cake itself. Um, and so the parts that I had closest to the cake were getting more color. Oh dear, this sounds like it'll be fun to rinse. Ooh. All right, but I am gonna go ahead and turn off the heat completely and let this cool until it hits room temperature over the next several hours. Let's wash our yarn. I am going to remove both our yarn mop and our glorious yarn cake. Ooh, look at those reds. And there's pink in the middle. So our dye bath looks clear. That is one good sign. Now let's try washing. I'm gonna be gentle because I don't want the cake to come apart, but if there's any bleeding, I'd like it to happen now. If I think it's necessary, I can still wash the yarn after I, oh yeah. Yeah, shoot, I probably should have used half as much red as I did. I mean, this yarn mop is really pretty, but man, that was some bleeding. Of course, it hadn't been pressed yet. So, ooh, look at that. All right, I wonder how far the color penetrates. And actually, I'm not seeing bleeding right now. Maybe it'll just, I don't know. Let's add some more soap, though. Uh, I'm gonna wash this until I can get the water as clear as I possibly can. Um, if I'm having trouble getting it to clear, I will set the yarn cake aside, put it through the spin dryer, and wash the yarn mop until that is completely clear. The pink is not bleeding, so I'm gonna get, go set this in the spin dryer to wait, and we can continue washing our cake. It looks fine, and then I squeeze it. Oh. Well, that wasn't bad. Um, I'm risking like tangling this into a loose length. But let's try one more. And then I'm gonna put this through the spin dryer too because I'm actually feeling optimistic. But again, <laughs> it's worth doing a little swatch test to make sure if you're gonna mix it with something that's darker. And it's good for commercial yarns too. Um, I've had even pastel-y kind of yarns bleed. But hey! 
All right, let's unjinx this and let's go put our beautiful, beautiful cake through the spin dryer. Out of the spin dryer and sitting for a day, our yarn cake is mostly dry. There's some dampness towards that center, but I am ready to go and wind this by hand onto my nitty knotty so we can see the gradient. This is actually dry enough that I would be comfortable using my automated skein winder, but one of the things I want to see is if the color will crock at all on my fingers, which means that it'll rub off, which would mean that it's not set very well. Uh, I'm not sure how much bleeding uh, we could see, but I will wash the yarn after we uh, after it's caked up, but I'll come back and show you the gradient. Here is our gradient unwound on my PVC pipe Nitty Knotty. The gradient goes from this dark maroon with some very pale pink speckles to a more variegated medium pink that gets slightly darker towards the other end. I am really happy we got as much color saturation into the center as we did. I think that this is a great candidate for uh, winding up into a second cake with the lighter portion on the outside to then dye with a second color. Maybe not this specific gradient, but if I had started with a little less dye at the beginning, then I think it would work great, even on a superwash yarn with acid dyes. The Silver Stellina may have picked up a little bit of color. It's hard to show for sure, but it definitely looks like it did pick up some pink hues. There was no crocking on my hands when I was unwinding this, which means it's good. No color came off. I am not sure if we will see more bleeding when I go and rinse this out again. If I had been dealing with bleeding in the cake form, I probably want to go through another round of washing with this yarn. Our yarn mop from this video is this beautiful, beautiful, bright pink tonal yarn that goes everywhere from some white patches to more bright pink because even once I added the mop into the dye bath, there was some more dye coming out of the yarn cake. Overall, this is very, very pink, but the shade might be brighter than some of the reds we see in our gradient, but overall I think that that's because it is a lot less saturated. It just looks like a very vibrant pink rather than a more pale red. It is very hard to photograph reds as true, and this really does feel like a Bordeaux, a very rich, deep red wine and then even some of those paler tones. Like there's definitely pinks in there, but it's definitely not a bright pink like what we see in our yarn mop. Maybe at the very palest shades, but it does look like a more red gradient overall. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I hope that you found this video helpful. Up until this point, I normally like to do cake dyeing type gradients on non-superwash yarns. I wanted the dye to strike the yarn a little bit slower, so that way I could have color penetrate towards the center. And well, that worked today. Starting with a lot of dye probably didn't hurt either. I think you could really vary how much time you press on the cake whether you add it dry and the amount and timing of when you add the acid to sort of shift how much color you want to go towards the center or not. But ultimately, uh, what you get is always somewhat of a surprise because it's hard to wind two cakes uh, with identical tension. I don't know if I wrote, added this at the beginning, but when I wound my yarn cake, I wound it once and then I wound it a second time to make sure it was as loose and fluffy as possible. But you can definitely start with a tighter round cake. You'll just end up with probably a sharper, steeper type of gradient because there'll be more resist towards the center. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Um, make sure that you subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. 
I release new videos on Tuesday and Friday mornings and also at a lot of other random times and so you don't want to miss any of the new content. If you love the yarn that I dye and wish that you could have one of your own to play with, uh, head over and check out the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. My store is filled with hand dyed yarn featured in past and upcoming videos. There is a wide range of colors and techniques showcased in there. And so even if you're not shopping for any yarn, it's a great place to go and get some sneak peeks of what might be coming up on the channel. If you're concerned with bleeding, one thing you could do, which is not something I've done right now, but you can add vinegar to your soap bath. That is one way, if you're gonna block a shawl or really any kind of project, that you can prevent bleeding in the first place. But if you haven't added vinegar first and you see bleeding start to happen, go ahead and add some vinegar to your rinse bath. And always, 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 if you're con again, if you're concerned with bleeding, block with cold water. But this gradient looks perfect and I am not seeing any bleeding at all. Thank you so much for watching, everyone.